It has been months in the making, but Monday is finally the day. We're talking about the Iowa caucuses and the race for president. And to quote the Grateful Dead, what a long, strange trip it has been. Joining us right now, CNN politics reporter Tom Lobianco. Tom, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Boy, this is one of the strangest political trips I've ever seen. <laughs> it, it is crazy. You've been through this process many, many times. Has this election cycle, uh, as you mentioned, this has been unlike anything you have ever seen? Uh, boy, from the Trump effect right down to having someone with the with the title socialist in their label running a, a, as a serious threat for, for the Democratic nomination. I mean, just take all the rules and toss them out the window. This is I've never seen anything like this before. Let's get to the race and uh, start off with the Democrats. Bernie Sanders has been making gains in the polls on Hillary Clinton in the last several weeks. Does he have enough support to pull off a win or an upset, depending on how you look at it? Well, that gets right down to the expectations game. Uh, if he wins, that looks really good for him. Uh, the Clinton folks have, uh, have for a long time, been kind of ta tamping down expectations. But, you know, up until a few weeks ago, they, were, they thought they were going to win this thing. Um, if he wins it, that looks really good for him. Uh, it's, it's tight right now. Most polls have them running between, you know, 44 to 48, 40, 46 to 46. They're running neck and neck. All, all the polling is within the margin of error at this point. Um, she used to be running 20 points ahead. Um, they're kind of, there's an interesting little game behind the scenes right now that they play with us in the, in, the, in the press, of course, which is setting the expectations. What counts as a win? I think for most people, it's pretty clear that uh, even, even a, a standard squeaking out just by a few points would count as a win for him and would be huge heading into New Hampshire. The polls are much closer on the uh, Democratic side than they are on the Republican. We'll talk about that in just a second. But if Hillary Clinton does win, what does this mean for both Bernie Sanders and Martin O'Malley? Would O'Malley be forced to drop out? Well, that's a good question. You know, the O'Malley folks are, um, he hasn't really gotten much traction, but they're feeling good about New Hampshire. Um, it's a big question for him. Uh, you know, when when does he head out of this thing? And where? And I think the bigger question is, you know, where does his support go? One of the interesting thing about the uh, the Iowa caucuses is that if you don't reach that 15 percent uh, benchmark uh, for uh, supporters inside each individual caucus, then those supporters uh, are uh, either sent to uh, Clinton or Sanders or, or are released, as they say. So there's kind of a, a, a brinksmanship question for O'Malley right now. Does he send those supporters over to Clinton? Does he give her like a 5% boost? Uh, does he push them to Sanders? Uh, that's one of the, the other big question marks right now. Really in Iowa, it's turnout is the question mark for, uh, for Clinton and Sanders, and then what happens on the margins with O'Malley's supporters? Now on to the Republicans. Let's talk about Donald Trump. Certainly he has been at the top of the polls for months, sometimes by double his nearest challenger. Do you think that support at the polls may possibly translate into actual votes come Monday night? Well, that, that is the key question for him. Uh, you know, one of the things that not a lot of folks know uh, is that he has this great organizer out there, uh, Chuck Laudner. Uh, he uh, worked for Santorum. He's, a, he's just an absolute veteran of uh, Iowa contest. And, uh, you know, what he said before is that he was always looking for uh, sort of this, this true candidate, this true conservative, and someone he could believe in, and not just believe in, but who would also win. Um, and he, you know, he thought that he found that in Trump. Um, you know, they, out there they say that, you know, you organize and you organize and you organize, and then you hope you get hot at the end. And um, he's been hot all along, so the question mark really is, has that organizing been happening? Um, it, it looks that way right now. You know, the polling shows us that he's, put, he's, he's starting to pull away from Cruz. Uh, the Canadian questions, the birther attacks, this, this second birther crusade that he's on with Cruz, uh, you know, it's, it appears to have been quite effective. Um, but again, that, that is the key question. Can you turn that energy? This is the same uh, question that Bernie Sanders faces. Can you turn the energy into actual caucus attendees? All right. Well, the uh, last question and the same kind of question, uh, this one for the Republican candidates who are polling in the single digits, do they all carry on through New Hampshire or will Iowa be possibly a wake up call for many of them? Well, you have to think that, right? 
you know, one of the interesting things is, you know, when, when we started this back back about a year ago, really, really focusing intently on 2016, a lot of the chatter was what was going to happen with super PACs, uh, unlimited money. You know, at that point, this was before Trump got in, this was before Sanders got hot. A lot of folks uh, were talking about what is the unchecked money going to do? Um, you know, it's clear that uh, for, in Bush's case at least, that it hasn't really done done a whole lot. Uh, it hasn't stopped his fall in the polls, but what it does appear to do is uh, be able to keep people alive, keep them from dropping out who otherwise uh, might have been gone months ago. Uh, you know, that, that unchecked money effect really seems to keep people around longer. And, you know, to bring it back to brass tacks here, uh, as long as those people are around, especially in the Republican field, that makes it easier for Trump to win. Uh, Trump, the, Trump's not winning a majority, he's winning a plurality, and that's really all he needs to do as long as the field is wide open like this. We have come a long way, and we have a long way to go. CNN politics reporter Tom Lobianco, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you.